Hey guys, a bit of a different angle here for this one. Um, unfortunately this box is so massive I can't obviously get it on the screen, it's, uh, it's impossible. So I think what I'm going to have to do is sort of open the box and get the contents out and show you there um, basically what you're getting for your money. But you can see it's, uh, it's quite a big old box. I haven't actually measured it but it does say on here that the it's 1.14 meters high so um, yeah pretty big um, I think it's about the same size as this box because I believe I haven't looked inside it's still sealed I haven't opened the tapes or anything you can still see the tape there at the top and um, I believe that the the model can be stored in the box once it's finished what I do find very interesting they're calling it a level 5 and it says here 13 plus when this kit came out back in 69 and then you had various you know additions of it ever since then um, they always showed it with a boy so <laughs> they say we're getting less intelligent as a human race maybe it's true eh? Um, the other thing that surprises me it says here new well if that's new I'm six so Hi everybody, I'm Six. Right then guys, I'm going to give this a go. So I've got the box on the bench. I can only move it so far to the right. Um, so you're going to have to tip your head sideways, I'm afraid, if you want to read this, because obviously it's a very long, tall box. So this is what we get, as I say, it's a level five. They're telling you it's new. It's the 50th anniversary, 2019. They're saying it's an Apollo 11 Saturn V rocket. Uh, it's 196 scale, 183 parts, it's 114 centimetres high and um, we've got some paint, some glue and a brush included. I actually like these brushes, they're great. And uh, they're saying here 13 plus. So that's about as far as I can move the box, which is lucky because basically below there is just a load of jargon. So looking on this side of the box, we can see we've got the same sort of level 5 50th anniversary stuff. And then we've got this here in German. And then I can stop this here and then you can pause if you want to read that and tip your head sideways. Um, I'm afraid I can't turn the box to um, to get it reading the right way across the screen and I can't actually make the uh, camera go. I could flip the um, video over I guess I might do that we'll see. Um, and then going down there we've got the different languages but um, I think most of my uh, most of my viewers, I think, speak English. It's, I've, I've had a look and most of my viewers are in America, Canada, UK and Australia. So, um, yeah, but uh, for the French guys among you, here we go. There's some French there. And uh, maybe I can zoom in a bit, actually, on this. Here we go. Let's zoom out a sec. And then there's um, Netherlands there. So there you are, Seb. You can have a read of that. Dutch modelling. And, um, and then the German up at the top. There you go. And then turn the box over, we've got exactly the same thing on the on the back as on the front, whichever the front and the back is. And then here we go again on the side, level five, and it's telling us a complex model kit for experienced model builders requires substantial knowledge and skill. I didn't read that. I better take this back, I think. Um, I'm not going to be able to manage it. So, um, yeah, sort of 13 age, ages 13 to adult. But as I said, this is new. So I'm only six, so I will have to take it back. And <laughs> we've got the uh, the common here, the normal kind of what Ravel do now with their um, these are pictures of the of the sprues and everything. And you can see in behind here, there are those flat panels I, I was telling you about that roll out to make the uh, the tubes. And then we've got some images of the model here. Um, I'm surprised they put a close up of the uh, command service module because it's all wrong. Um, it's yeah it's it's totally incorrect uh i've got some good news on that coming um but there's no um there's no protection over the front of it and this is actually all incorrect the same as the 144 scale one but at least the 144 scale i believe has got some a protective cover is it the bpc blast protective cover i'm learning and then going down here we've got uh, images of the model here you can see the lunar module inside behind that clear panel um, there's the clear panel there, here. I don't think I'll be doing that. Um, and then we've got, uh, in here we've got this, it's telling you it contains the, the paint colours, which are here. We've got 90, 302, 330 and 360. Um, if they are actually the Ravel Aqua Colour paints, they're worth keeping. Um, the ones you tend to get in Airfix kits aren't 
it's that great but these if they're the actual Revell Aquacolor they're worth keeping and they're completely usable on a brush in water and if you look back you'll see my uh, test with spraying them as well and um, yeah so I don't think I've got that one I don't think I've got that one either so be quite handy although there'll be little tubs they won't be um, full proper pots so um, there we go and then down here further I can't get the camera I can't get the box over anymore but we just got a, a picture here and then it's the usual jargon advertising stuff down um, www.revel.de and barcodes and stuff um, and it's saying 2019 so uh, there we go guys that's the box and as you can see the tape here still sealed haven't been opened so I'm gonna um, have a look at here for the first time with you anyway guys so I've cut the tapes <clears throat> um, so it's a weird opening box it looks like this side comes out here like so and then this gets lifted no very strange um, okay looks like now this comes up so I've got more tapes to cut so let's just get these cut out so that's um that's six now six tapes have had to cut yeah, so basically it's a very very strong box which is gotta be a first for Revell and as you can see um, there's a little bit of room I'll go from one end to the other you can see this is the end face here we've got all this space here and then I'm going along that might go away going along here and you can see all this space here so I'll um I'll get the kit out of the box and uh yeah, with this kit will almost fit in a 144 scale box, I think. But I think the whole idea of this, actually, to be fair to Revell, the whole idea of this box, it, it is very rigid. It's very well made. And the whole idea of it is so that you can store the completed model in it. You can see, if I lift the plastic out, you can see under here we've got all these cardboard formers. And they're all designed to uh, support the model. So um, I'll get it all out of the bag and we'll have a look at the parts. Okay then guys, this is what you've been waiting for and uh, this is the contents of the box of the Revell 196 scale Saturn V Apollo rocket and this is the base and it's, I've had a measure, it's about 180 millimeters. Um, it's just over 8 inches um, sorry, it's about, it's about 200 millimeters. 210 millimeters square um, so you get an idea of the size of the thing uh, one, one thing I have noticed it's very very flimsy it could do with some stiffness inside um, perhaps a, a tube or something inside or build up a box or just a, a piece of um, a piece of uh, MDF or something in the middle just to give us some support because I could imagine the weight of the model will probably make it sag and these glue joints we get these stands will probably break so um, yeah worth looking into that guys if you're going to use it I probably won't um, I probably won't be using it so that's the stand now I've got all the bags here I've opened them um, I've undone the cellar tape which is nice no staples and uh, left the parts in the bag in case I may have a problem enough to take anything back so I want to keep it all in its original bags so first lot here we've got um, obviously one of the large uh, rings that go between the um, got a bit of a short shot there by the look of it I'll have to keep, up, keep an eye open for that um, so yeah this is obviously one of the rings that go between the tanks the, the fuel tanks that, that went all the way up through um, through the stages and uh, beautifully molded very very crisp it's probably got a slight draft on it which is probably not actually correct but you know it's not going to notice um, but yeah the, the molding on here is much nicer than it is on the 144 scale and of course because it isn't made in two halves you haven't got that sort of thing which I show you if you look at my review of the 144th and my subsequent build videos you'll see on there um, that we've got this issue with everything being oval wherever there's this but it's because of the molding you, you can't you can't mold that these ridges all the way around unless you have a multi-part mold and in 1968 they just did this so obviously when it came to the ends you had to have that shape that's absolutely fine these days unacceptable but in those days you know it's a lovely model and it costs 23 quid 
not this one, the 144 scale. So that's um that's that part. This part here is uh, showing its age. You can see um, these have all been hacked off the the main sprue to get in the packaging, I should think. But we've got the top of the tank here. This is obviously um, part of stage. This is where I get confused. It's called it, it's actually stage three, but it's called S4. So yeah, it's called third stage S4B is what it's called. So I don't know why that is. And apparently this this stage on top of this is where the lunar module sat. So uh, that's that one there. And then going into the next one, we got another load of rings here. Great if you uh, want some pastry cutters, guys. Keep the keep the missus away. She'll be uh, raiding your model box for pastry cutters. So there's a nice big um, another nice big ring there with the the crisp detail on, all lovely and sharp. It is very very crisp, and I believe this is 1969. This model. So um, yeah, for those days, really really nice, lovely. Um, and this is obviously the top of the second stage, um, stage two, where um, leads up to the uh, fourth stage four, third stage. Um, maybe someone can tell me why it's like that, but uh, there we go. So that one's going to go inside there like that. Actually, no, it's that way up, isn't it? So that one's going to go inside there. And then this is obviously the front section of the stage four, third stage. And that there is where the lunar module is going to sit inside, like so. I'm guessing like that. So the lunar module is going to sit inside there, and then we've got a clear panel to go in there so we can see the lunar module. I don't think I'll be doing that. I think I'll actually do this as the actual uh, as the actual rocket looked looked on the um, on the base. Uh, I'm not one for having clear panels and exposing interior detail. I, I just I don't know I just don't like it um, I don't ever knock anybody for doing it and I can understand why people do it but I, I would rather have the model looking like it it was and if I wanted to display the lunar module I'll display the lunar module separately next to it which I intend to do more on that in a minute um, so yeah there's those parts there so they go in there and that one drops in there so that's those and then we've got another box of rings here so this is this is just another ring that's going to go somewhere in the stage one, stage two assembly, um, either between them or in between in the middle of stage one or something. So that's that lot there. And then this is this looks to me like the back end of stage two, where you've got the five motors out of there, and then they sit inside. And then this, if this is the ring, as stage one blasts away. Then that ring comes away and then stage two fires off and off they go um, so there we go there's that one and then this is um this looks like the back of uh, the third stage here so um that would be the single motor on there single j2 um engine it was i've got it written down here it was it was run uh to get it up to about seventeen and a half thousand miles an hour um and then it was shut down with remaining fuel and then it was put into a, a, a translunar trajectory at a speed of about twenty four and a half thousand miles an hour so there you go and we can see here mine's got some damage there where it's been uh, crushed so uh, yeah again so we've seen a bit of damage and a short shot so far so um, yeah this model isn't coming without its issues they are very slight but uh, worth looking out for so that's that lot there and then the last pile from this bag is another load of rings and here we've got the end of a tank here so this is going to be um, this is going to be the ends of the tanks between stage one and stage two I'm guessing so uh, nice they've made it all in one not so nice they've got all this raised detail in here and what this is is this is where they um, this is where the uh, the tool becomes worn or whatever and they put these little grinding marks you can see inside here they put those in and if you can the camera will pick them up with this white plastic again it's a nightmare we get the flicker in as well I'm sorry if I turn that light off whoops then you should see in there you've got the um oh dear I still haven't bought a light guys I'm sorry I will do 
um, you can see in there those those little ridges they are basically um, what they grind into the mold tool you can imagine the the mail of that would look like a would look like the outside of this say and they just grind little tiny nicks in it and it makes it hold in the tool so that this one comes away um, you'll see that on a lot of um, a lot of molded items for the garden and the house and whatever um, there's none in there but they've got it in there like you see so that ridge that's in there that was probably what that ridge was designed to do originally just hold it in the tool um, when I was doing some molding with working with um, um, thermoset material which is a complete and utter swine to work with um, that had like a, a conical cone in the bottom of the um, if you can have a cone that isn't conical duh um, it had a cone in the bottom of the mold tool below the sprue and that basically it molded into that and then when the tool came apart the sprue would be pulled out of the upper tool by the, well, the parts would be pulled out of the upper tool with that cone and then of course the ejector pins would come up and push it away and that little cone was called a snatch block um, or, the, or the tool that the snatch the, the actual piece that came out was called the block but the actual design was called the snatch and it's designed to so the parts stay in the one part of the tool and then the ejector pins can push them out otherwise it all just stays in the top and then the ejector pins do nothing and then the tool shuts up again and things get damaged so um there's all the rings there so i'm going to get those put back in the bag and i'll come straight back okay i've got these sprues out now so this is um there's no sprue letters or anything on here but we can see that the the flash around here and you know it, it's basically really really showing its age um, I think it's 1969 this one um, it's got F9022 whatever that means on there but we can see on here again I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up but you can see there's uh, a lot of irregularity in those fins where the uh, the plastic has shrunk after it's come out of the mold tool so really um i think Raval should be taking a bit more care than that you can see the uh the the, the shape in the plastic that is your mold but that's the, the way the plastic's gone into the tool and looks to me like it's starting to cure before it's actually molded but um so yeah they're probably trying to um reduce flash because the tool is going to be pretty worn um, flash is basically where your mold tool comes together and the flat surfaces no longer quite seal because they're a bit they might have been polished a couple of times or just getting worn out so uh, yeah we've got some um, some conduit there that goes up and up and down the side of the uh, the actual main rocket body we've got our fins here and we've got our shrouds here which go around the rocket engines um, I won't be using any of that so I probably won't be using any of this actually just those there so uh, more of that later as I said um, and then we've got this one here which is our this is our main floor for the actual um, for stage one this is where our five J1 rocket engines go um, we've got our little shrouds around the side this is the uh, the frame here for the um, oh what's it called there the L L E F I can't remember what it's called now this is where the um, they fire this off if they get a major catastrophe on launch they can um they could just hit a button or pull a lever or whatever abort and this if, if you look this is actually on the front of the very nose of the rocket and this will actually pull the command module away from the rest of the rocket ship and they'll come down um in safety so uh, if there's a massive problem with stage one or whatever on launch then uh, they can get away safely um and then that has these little engines here these little rocket motors which surprisingly are hollowed out that's quite unbelievable um, and they they're actually the little rocket motors that, that pull it away so uh, not sure that ever got used actually um, maybe someone can tell me in the comments but I'm not aware of that ever being used so there we go that's that one interesting fact I found out yesterday I was talking about stage three and stage four um, well, it's s3 sorry it's stage three s4 it's called but uh, I didn't realize that once rather than just let it drift around space every Apollo mission they actually had a controlled collision with the moon so they could uh, study the reactions of what happened with a collision with the moon so um, there's actually a YouTube channel called Vintage Space and there's a young lady on there 
and every time I watch it I learn something and I really enjoy listening to her so um, I don't know what her name is I think it might be Amy I'm not sure but I've commented a couple of times on her channel and uh, yeah really really interesting stuff I really enjoy it um, of course she could tell me anything but uh, I really enjoy what she says so um, anyway I enjoy her passion as well she's very passionate about the subject so here we've got our um, these are our J2 engines so we've got five for the um, so we've got yeah we've got six engines here in all got um, six well 12 halves so we've got six engines so that'll be five for stage two and one for state well third stage s4 whatever you call it um, and then we've got some other rocket boosters here which will be used for trimming and uh, the other thing I didn't realize I learned from um, from vintage space is when they actually come apart when stage one comes apart it actually fires a rocket motor yeah an engine takes liquid fuel and is restartable a motor takes solid fuel and is a once only so you fire it and that's it it burns out and that's it I learned that from her channel as well so thank you <laughs> but um yeah these motors they go on the on the front of stage one so what they actually did is when they actually came apart because there's so much inertia when they separated stage one would have just stayed with it so they fired these motors and it pulled stage one away so um that was pretty cool so that's what they are for um and then here's some pipe work and stuff for the engines but as you can see there's a lot of flash i'll just check the camera's focusing in here because there's a lot of flash the multiple multiple showing its age but, I mean it is what it is guys the only other option to this which is more modern is the dragon 172nd scale kit which i believe is covered in issues in errors um and costs an arm and a leg so i'm hoping it'll be re-released with this being the 50 year anniversary but we'll see and then we've got these beautiful f1 engines here and um yeah they look really really nice they're not as well detailed as they would be if it was modern times but i mean we've got all this pipe work here it's got this pipe work here all this detail here I and mean, when they go together they're gonna look lovely when you compare those as you know i'm doing the uh, 144th scale is the here you know, they are drawing at the moment i've just done uh, part part two is it um so you can see yeah the difference in size there's the 144 scale compared to the 196th and uh, you can see there's a lot more detail on there than there is on there but um, yeah lovely and I'll be doing the same on these you can see inside here nice and smooth they would have looked the same as that before I did the work so go and have a look at my build go and have a look at step one and I'll show you how I get this lovely smooth more correct finish in there um, and yeah, I know they should have the uh, protective panels on the outside, but those panels were added when it was ready for launch, apparently, um, or assembled onto the launch pad. So I would rather see all this detail than see it all covered up because I think it looks better. So I'm going to imagine that my model is um, representing a um a saturn 5 that's just been built up and put on the launch pad and hasn't had those on yet whether that's possible or not i don't know but i'm going to stick with it because that's how i like it to look so um, yeah i'd rather have that than the, the, all the, the flat sort of blobby um look to it but that's just me so that's those plastic sprues out of the way and as i said we've got that little bit as well there which was loose in the bag so i'm going to get these put back in the bag safely I don't need to cut the camera while I do this because it won't take a sec. I'll just put that piece in there and then I'll seal the bag up. It's nice that Rival used this tape rather than staples. Some so much better. The staples are such a pain. And they run they run such a risk of damaging parts when you pull them out, especially decals and clear parts and stuff. So that's that's out of the way. I'll put that back over there. And then while we're still on the main rocket body this here i believe is the clear part where you see the lunar module that goes on to the uh, third stage which i will more than likely be painting over and i can see here there's loads of holes in this bag i'm hoping these holes were put in the bag before the part went in because 
otherwise no they are wow look at that now have a look at that airfix look at that part this is from a 1969 mold tool look at it all right there's a couple of scratches down the bottom here but if we look at that if i give you something to read look at that whatever angle we look at there's well, there's a little bit of distortion on the edge when you look right through the edge but honestly that's really really nice well done Ravel it's it's flat it's got no distortion in it it's beautiful just like it was made yesterday so um of course they may have made a brand new tool for this but I very much doubt it really really nice lovely um it would be a shame to paint that <laughs> in fact it's a shame to think that maybe someone there's someone out there who's got that part that's broken or scratched and I'm going to rub mine down and paint it that's a shame isn't it so uh, there we go so that's that's that okay so here we go with our um, last bag of parts it's not the last of the parts I can assure you but it's the last bag of parts and in here you can see we've got a clear acetate sheet for obviously for cutting out our windows and um, this is the command service module and lunar module now I can tell you that these parts this is actually a kit in itself um, it's the 196 scale it's called I think it's 03700 is the number and it's called Columbia and Eagle or Eagle and Columbia and basically it's the command module command service module lunar module and a base to put it on with a stand um, and it's quite a nice little model to be honest the moulding's quite nice and I mean for its day um, you know the riveting goes around pretty far I can show you up close on there it's such a joy not to work with white plastic but uh, yeah you can see it's um, it's not bad at all the detail on there um, and then you've got the same on the command module that's the exhaust there for the lunar module which is strange because it's on this sprue with all these parts and then we've got the um, that's the the front or upper surface if you like of the the service module that's the rear end of it um, and then the three seats that go in the command module and the the base the base for um, re-entering earth atmosphere which is all so it's all very nice and when you consider it's um it's, it's 50 years old it's uh, it's all very good uh, and then we've got a stand here in fact while we've got the stand I'll show you the base as well we've got a base here which is nice and flat and the uh, stand obviously goes in here and you can see we've got some rocks and debris and stuff it's a start for you to uh, work at a little diorama should you want to and I'm tempted to do actually build this as the lunar module and um, Columbia more on that later um, and you can see we've got the little um, thrusters there that uh, orientate everything I think that's part of the lunar module there and then we've got the um, the J2 engine exhaust for the back of uh, for the back of the um, service module um, and there we go all very nice all very <laughs> for its age is very good um, and then we've got our our figures here and as you can see they've also got their helmets with their their uh, visors down except for the guy that's sat in the uh, command service module or the command module should I say more thrusters there there's obviously a bit of flash on everything but you know that's what to expect in a model this old um, and really it's all that's out there I mean the other option has got the 70 second scale airfix which is flashy it's going to be flashy you've got the um, 48 scale various different people uh, there's the Rival one and then you've got the 30 second scale command module but they're all they're all pretty old um, I think you've got there's some dragon kits about as well which are very pricey these days but I think they've got accuracy issues I'm not sure I'm not an expert on the subject at all um, but I'm unfortunately I'm gonna come to something in a minute there's a major accuracy issue um, with this but here we've got the uh, that's obviously the upper or is that the upper or lower that's going to be the upper upper face of the base if you like and that's going to be the lower face our rocket engine will go in there 
and then um, instrument panel there with some with some representative detail on it um, some other bits and pieces and there's some more supports there for the legs I can't see any date on any of these parts at all and as I say we've got this clear sheet of acetate so that's all of that one um, the one unfortunate thing about this and the reason I say I may build this as a separate um, kit is because um, this is a what they refer to as a block one um, command service module it's its design is different to the block two and you, you can get the um, you can get the block two as an aftermarket if you're that fussy uh, but this is basically incorrect um, this is the this is the service module that was used on Apollo 1 and if you don't know Apollo 1 um, the uh, command module actually caught fire while it was on the ground and the guys all died in seconds because it was such a an, an oxygen rich atmosphere and unfortunately they all perished um, so this this module was never used again in any manned flights they changed the design um, had an outward opening door I believe and um, yeah they changed the design so the whole thing actually looks different to this so to say this is Apollo 11 is actually incorrect if you're a rivet counter if you're not a rivet counter and you just want to build a display to put in your case where you've got you know this sitting there with over this base on its stand you know and then you've got the lunar module sat down here you know you can see it's going to be quite a nice little model um and people say oh no but that's the block one you know blah 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 and uh, yeah you can see okay now what I was going to do was because I don't intend to put the lunar module inside my Saturn V I was just going to build this fill in that slot and just have this as the lunar module sat on a base because I'm not I've never really done a diorama before um, other than a few matchbox tanks when I was a kid um, but because of this inaccuracy here and because I've gone to the expense of getting the the newer update set for my um, Saturn V then I've been in touch with real space and now I've got one of these on the way I've got the command module and service module block two on the way so basically this whole set here everything we see in front of us now is superfluous to what I need I don't need this for my kit at all so um, I may actually build this as a model on its own as you go and buy the Ravel kit and uh, go from there I may also do a review of this on its own as that kit um, I'll have to print off the instructions or something we'll use these uh, instructions but uh, there is there is one difference I've noticed um, that if you buy this this as the Columbia and Eagle set for like 15 pounds in the UK you get some gold foil to go on the lunar module but if you go and spend 80 odd pounds on the Saturn you don't so there you go work that one out um, so there we go we got now working on some paperwork here got some health and safety bump decals this is a very very small decal sheet for such a huge model that's all you're gonna get it's nothing much um, but basically you've got your these United States and your flags to go on the command module and then we've got these flags in these um, areas here which are for the lunar module ABCD for the fin identification then various bits and pieces around the rest of the rocket but as you can see there's not much there at all really for, for something this size um, again more on that in a minute and then this is one of the weird parts of this kit it must have really blown people's minds when it first came out um, they, they make this like this and this is basically plastic sheet all printed out with the, the writing on and everything apparently the writing is inaccurate but uh, you know if you just want to build a big model of a Saturn V who cares um, and basically what you do we'll see in the instructions you curl this around and you make it into a cylinder and then that goes into the end of those tubes I showed you earlier and there's your actual rocket so you haven't got any seams to deal with because basically where there's a seam it goes behind a vertical conduit so we've got that one there 
this one here is going to be around the bottom of stage one stage two and that one's stage one as well i think so um so yeah a, a very unusual way of doing things um i've seen there there is some stuff online the reason i'm doing this is i found nothing about this model particularly on youtube there is some stuff about it online but i did see someone build it and they actually cut the end off so that it butted up rather than overlapped to get a better joint so we'll have to look into that when we build it um i may i, I have a lathe so i may even turn up some tubes um to replace these so it'll actually be uh, aluminium tubes or, or or some form of plastic tubing rather than this um rather than this uh this plastic sheet we'll see we'll see when we get there so that's um that's that part of it taken care of and then also in the box remember i showed you these formers these are all very nice um beautifully printed black shiny ink and they've shame they didn't make a, an, an lut <laughs> a launch umbilical tower um yeah this is all to go in the box so you can actually store the model in the box should you want to um, i'm also guessing what you could do is if you wanted to line the box with some black paper or something you could actually stand it in there and have the boxes like a you know almost like um a command post where a, a, a guard would stand so uh yeah we'll see um i think i'll probably get the lut for this one i need to have a chat to the guy in america who makes them so last part let's look at the instructions so usual sort of modern Revell sort of fold out um, manual, not nothing too glossy. I need to make sure I've got you in shot here. There we go. So we're all in. Um, so straight away we, we, we go to page two. No, we don't. We go to page two. And then we've got all our uh, bits and pieces here, our hints and tips on how to make a model, which is great for beginners. Um, if you are a beginner, um, that's the main thing. Wash your parts first. Um, if you are a beginner, have a look at some of my videos on this channel. I'm also doing a video on the 144 scale build, which is aimed at beginners. So that'll be a great help to you. Um, and I think that would help you if you're going to make this model. As I say, it says it's a level 5, 13 upwards, but I think a youngster could build this. Um, certainly a beginner could build it. There's nothing, nothing too difficult. So, um, yeah, have a look at my builds and uh, there's lots of hints and tips. So here we've got our... Um, stuff that we need the glue and everything and it says here special glue i don't know what that is um, I'm, i can only assume it's super glue uh, this this contact are clear which is here i don't recommend um you're better off with normal sort of pva acrylic pva glue um i don't um i don't recommend the contact clear at all but i don't know what the special glue is i'll have to find out if you know please tell me in the comments below because uh, I'd, I'd be interested to know what special glue is. Um, I can only assume it's another form of white glue. Or it may be super glue. I don't know. But it says recommended for attaching chrome parts. There aren't any chrome parts. So <laughs> let's see how we get on with that one. Um, so we've got all our paint call outs here. Which are the ones we, uh, we need to use. And the actual paints we've got. Which I forgot to show you. We've got 302. Which is black. We've got 330, which is here, that's the red. We've got 90, silver, and 360, which is the green. So if you want to do a, a nice job of this and do it as they're recommending, you have to get these other colours as well. You don't have to get Revell, you can get other colours. I mean, like for instance here, this one is saying iron metallic and black matte. Um, do, 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 do you could use for that one xf84 tamiya dark iron that's going to give you that color okay the only trouble is tamiya paints aren't very easy to brush and then you've got your other you can do some cross-referencing online or you can ask me to help you if you want and i'll tell you what colors you can you can use and in what make a paint in fact it's easier if you're going to ask me a question uh nigel's modeling bench at gmail.com um email me tell me what paints you want to use rather than me try and find a cross reference for every different manufacturer so if you want to use Humbrol, then i can tell you that i can find the, the cross reference for you uh, or if you can only get viejo and stuff then just let me know what you want to use 
Going over the page here, we've got our normal sprue callouts and all the sprues are lettered, even though the actual sprues themselves aren't lettered. All those rings I showed you there, look. And then we've got part of our, uh, this is part of a lunar module, which should be over here with that lot. Um, and then we've got our flat plastic sheeting there. Um, parts not used are in black. And there are none. So that was a waste of space, wasn't it? Um, and then we're going straight into the assembly. And we're adding these legs onto the stand, uh, which you, you might want to do. Like I said, you need to put some support in the bottom of that stand. Uh, it will it will sag in the middle if you don't. Um, then we're going to build up our engines. It's saying these are F1 engines, five of them. Chance for super detail in there if you want to. I probably will. I don't know if I'll go to town. But as I say, I'm certainly not going to put the, um, the covering on there. I don't like the look of it. I'd rather see a, a detailed engine on there as it is in displayed in, in um, Cape Kennedy um, or Kennedy Space Center, should I say. Um, then we're going to add some more pipe work and that to our engines and put them into the base. There's obviously some issues with this base because if you get the new wear set, it comes with a different base. Um, then we're going to glue the base onto the bottom of the first stage. And here we are now rolling up our first tube. And as you can see, we put this part A10 into the tube, roll it around, and then we've got these parts B11 that go inside. So we just, just glue them and sandwich them in and then pegged it all closed. And that'll hold that into a cylinder. And we're doing the same here. We're putting B15 onto that end of that um, plate, rolling it round, pushing it through the holes, clamping it shut, and that's that job done. And then we're going to add this into the onto the lower section here. So obviously these conduits that go up the outside, they're going to actually give you your outward support and they're going to clip inside as well, I think, on the bottom. So very, very nice. Um, I did read that um, uh, something online, somebody built one. And although you may think this all looks very flimsy, apparently it ends up as being a very rigid structure. Um, of course, a tube is one of the strongest structures known to man. So uh, basically, um, here we are adding our shrouds, putting on the fins on the outside, um, and then we're going to add our, our next stage here, which is I-14. So that's a plastic ring we're going to um, paint up and everything. They're telling you to paint it as you go. If I were you, I'd build the model and then do your painting. Um, as you go up higher, everything needs to be orientated correctly and you could quite easily make a mistake. So I would recommend build it up and then paint it once it's built up because uh, you'll see these black stripes. They tend to sort of get, get misaligned as they go. You'll see you'll see what I mean at the end, I think. Um, so there we are building up the rest of that one. And then we're starting on stage two. So that's the uh, that's the ring that goes at the bottom of stage two, the one that falls away after the um, after stage one has left it behind. And then we're going to build up our build six of these engines, um, six of the uh, J2 engines. And then we're going to add some pipe work on here. And it's telling us what colours to paint all that. Check your references. And then we've got these little cylinders around here. So they're, they're pretty nicely detailed for, for a small scale model. Um, they look to me to be probably nicer than the Dragon ones, actually. They're certainly a bit better than the um, Rival 144 scale. That is an absolute joke. Go and have a look at my build. When I get to it, you'll, you'll see it's just a joke. They've got, the, they've got a, a round plate with the engine sat on it, and there's nothing above them. It's just nozzles into midair. I don't know what they were thinking. Um, and then, basically, we're going to add the engines on there. And then I missed the page again. And then we're going to add some outer shrouds and I don't know if these are thrusters or just fairings or whatever on the outside. And then we're going to roll up another sheet here. This is going to be for our stage two, I believe. Yep, that's our stage two. Um, and again, we're going to put this on the outside, peg it on the inside, put a clamp in there. Don't use too much glue. If you're using stuff like Tamiya Extra Thin, stuff like this glue, it's very, very hot. If you put too much glue in there, you will actually distort the plastic sheet. And what you will find is it will try and pull apart and it will probably all wrinkle up down the edge of this um, support. So 
be very careful don't use too much glue and um, something like this one the extra thin quick setting is very hot so if you are using that be very very careful um, you might even want to consider um, gluing it together with super glue peg it let it all dry and then perhaps afterwards just a quick brush down with some liquid glue down the sides just to stick it together um, <clears throat> I'll, it, I'll be doing a build of this online we'll cross that bridge when we come to it but just if you are building this now don't saturate it in glue it will all distort um, and if I do turn the barrels make my own tubes up you'll have to remind me I need to do this to show you exactly what's what's going uh, so there we go we've made up that and then we're going to make up the um, upper section with the um, we've got the upper uh, fuel tank there I believe that is liquid oxygen in there somebody will tell me if I'm wrong I'm learning I'm getting there I could a few weeks ago I knew nothing about all this um, and then we're going to add that to the top of that cylinder and then put that cylinder onto the bottom of there and then we're going to put stage two onto the intermediate part of the top stage one and then we're away now we're on to stage three um, and we're going to add our little cylinders around there and then put the actual motor on so this is the back of stage three rolling up another cylinder here this one's going to be smaller and then putting that together there so that's all very nice can't believe that that little motor there that little um engine takes it up to um it's not a motor it's an engine it takes it up to twenty four thousand miles an hour was it jesus um so there we go so starting on the lunar module now gluing the um gluing the top down to the midsection to the bottom so that's the lower out there and they're telling you here to paint it all in gold and as I said earlier if you actually get the Colombian Eagle kit you get a sheet of gold foil uh, what I actually did I bought a couple of Yorkie Easter eggs now where did I put my foil here it is and this here we go this is the foil you get with Rolo which is uh, the, the chocolates, um, the roll, the round toffee chocolates you get in the UK. So that's all nice, but it looks a bit pale. So I found this Yorkie, Yorkie Easter egg, and I believe this colour looks spot on. So um, yeah, I got two because I needed that much really, in case I build a, I don't know, um, a 16th scale lunar module, you never know. Um, so I thought I'd better get two. And unfortunately, because I had them, I had to eat the chocolate, you know life's a bitch sometimes so um there we go so I, I if you have a supermarket nearby that's got your keys go and get yourself an easter egg i think that color looks perfect and it also wrinkles up very nicely as well so to really replicate the old the original so uh, that's very nice put that away for safekeeping um and then basically yeah we're going to uh build up this put the legs on painting everything gold it's telling us to snap that in. I don't know what that symbol means. <laughs> They've used a symbol and the symbol is actually not here. So that symbol there it looks like it can fold um, but I'm not sure that it can fold because it's just a pin going into a leg we shall see um, and then we're going to add these these legs down here oh so it looks like here you've got the choice to either have it folded or you can have them out so you don't it's not folding the 144 scale kit actually folds in and out this one doesn't so you've got to make your mind up if you have it folded and inside the, the, the Saturn V or if you can have it with its leg extended on the base. Um, then we've got this one here so we're going to finish off the base of the lunar module. Then we're using our sheet of acetate and cutting out these windows. These will be sized one to one so get yourself some um, tape or just measure it up. And, or if you don't want to ruin your instructions you can copy it off of there or just cut cut your acetate over there and um, and if you ruin your instructions that's what you do so um, there you go um, and then we've got some little thrusters going on here by the look of things into the sides and then we're down here we've got some more I'm just checking you I'm not off camera and I am and uh, yeah adding some more here and then adding the, the lunar module into the um, 
into the cone of the uh, of the third stage called stage four the third stage add in the clear part and then that is green in there but they do tell you at one point which I find quite shocking to I thought I saw several instructions they tell you to paint the inside of the oh, that's beyond the instructions for the actual Columbia Eagle set they tell you to paint the inside of the uh, Luda module green and I don't think that's correct I think it should be grey um, but apparently this was green so that's okay then we're going to add that over the top of the lunar module and then it's given us the option to glue it or not so we can either glue that onto the uh, onto the third stage or not and then assembling our command service module putting the ends on we can have our um, radar aerials whatever you want to call them they'll be up or down depending on whether you're having it in the in the actual um, model or if you're having it on a display and then putting together the uh, the thruster or the um, the engine engine nozzle if you like and then we've got our thrusters going here some decals going on and it's telling us you've got the option here to not cement it if you don't want to um, then we're going to start on a command module and it's telling us here to paint that in H and I'm not sure that's correct because I think that would have been a very very light green grey light blue matte okay maybe um, and then we've got our one um, we've got our one guy sat in there astronaut was the word I was looking for sorry <laughs> we've got our one astronaut who obviously stayed behind in the um, command service module and the other two went off into the lunar module so if you're going to build this as an in-flight um, as an in-flight um, or, or on the launch pad uh, Saturn V I don't think you'd have had two guys in there but you only get one seated astronaut so I'm not sure you'll see any through, anything through the windows anyway but um, maybe the aftermarket can help there so uh, there we go so then you're putting on that um, surround and the instrument panel there which is going into the uh, into the, uh, the the command module some more acetate to cut out and glue in it's telling you to use special glue whatever special glue may be and then we're going to glue the um, glue the main cone onto the base paint it all up add some decals okay so now we're moving on to our um, launch escape system here and basically this was on the on, on the front of the, uh, on the on the very front of the nose as you can see here and um, that would basically launch and, and, and pull away the command module in case of an emergency if they aborted the flight uh, once the um, once the Saturn was far enough along its journey you know after um, stage three separation stage two separation sorry that it would fire off a rocket from here you see the hole in the side it would fire off a rocket there and it would actually launch the um, that whole assembly with the, with the framework and everything and the part that's missing um, the, the cover that would um, that would all come off and then you would see then the bright shiny aluminium um, of the uh, of the command module so you know Revell as the kit is made where they've got it here with the bright aluminium on the front is actually incorrect it should have a um, it should have a cover over there so um, there we go moving forward and then we're going to do our base here so we can have our um, Columbia and Eagle if we want to on the on the display base just like you can with the kit I don't know why they've suggested that the trouble is with this model is if you do that you can't show your Saturn V complete so you you might want to show your Saturn V stood next to it with the with everything from here upwards missing I don't know why you would uh, but um, if you have an aftermarket um, uh, command service module like I have and you want to use the you don't want to put the lunar module inside there then you can actually build that as a model on its own you, you, you make your own mind up and then we've got um, going over the page here we've got our decal placement and um, basically it's showing us here where all the decals go um, unfortunately this this model has got less decals in it than the uh, than the actual um, the natural 144 scale kit so that's quite amazing so um basically there we go and you can see like i said earlier about painting you need to make sure that you get all your orientations correct because it's not just black lines going up 
that stay parallel. They're kind of all timed around and everything. And I think this was all done so that they could see that it was actually uh, rotating. You can see the, the, the detail A there looking down onto the top. And you know, you've got this cone over stage two. And you can see that that's, uh, that's what it's showing you. So you need to make sure you get that all right. Now, as I've mentioned in here, um, there are a couple of issues with the model. Uh, the, the, the biggest issues, um, in, in my opinion, from what I can see visually as you look at it, you know, if it was in a display stand, is the fact that the BPC is missing, the blast protective cover. Um, that, that for me is, is the big, the big, uh, the big no-no. And then I learned that apparently Revell have um, given you the wrong um, command service module. So, you know, now I know that it's going to bother me. So I've been in touch with a company called Real Space, um, realspacemodels.com and they have uh, a whole range of different space accessories, models, kits, whatever, in all sorts of different scales. And for $25, you can get a full replacement for all of that. So um, you get the new um, command service module, you get the new um, command module, and you also get the new BPC to go on the cover. And you have, but you have to use the Revell parts for, for above there. There's a picture of it I'll put up now. Um, I will be doing a review of that as soon as it arrives, and I will be using it in the model. So uh, yeah, so you'd be pleased to see that one. And also, as I said, the, the decals, there aren't that many in here, nothing like enough for an accurate representation of the Saturn V. Um, so I've actually bought the Newware um, model. If you look up Newware um, NW008, it's not Newware.com. The, the, the company has a, it's a Czech company and it's a, a, an unusual email address to us as, as Westerners. So uh, if you look, if you do a Google search for Newware uh, NW008, that'll get you up there. And um, that is basically a kit of 203 parts, it's 79 resin parts and 124 PE parts um, to upgrade this and make it a lot more accurate for what the kit already is. I know that all these shrouds are replaced um, and there's lots of PE and resin bits and bobs all the way up and down it. Uh, there's 154 decals, decals in the sheet that come with it. And also the beauty of it, you can model your Saturn V as any mission. So I'm obviously going to do mine as Apollo 13 because that's the one that um, that I was at. I was there at six years old. I can still remember the thunder. And uh, yeah, I, I, as I say, I've got a lot of stories to tell about that and I will tell during my builds. So thanks for watching this. Um, keep your eyes open for the reviews. Whichever one re arrives first will get the first review. Um, the new wear set or the... Um, the real space um, uh, command service module and command module with BPC. So, so there, there you go, guys. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah. Oh, the kit. I think it's a great little kit. Um, unusual for me to come back and speak after a review, but I thought I would in this one. Um, just wanted to make sure I clarified a couple of things. This kit retails at like £89 in the UK. Uh, it's available in various places for much cheaper than that. And as I said, I went into um, Antics to get my Mustang, mentioned that I could get this for a 65 pound and they matched it. So um, I, I asked them, I said, is you know, should, should I be mentioning this on my channel? And they said, yeah, you know, we, if, if we've got kits around and we need to shift them, then we'll match the prices. So um, it's always worth a try, it's worth an ask. Uh, so, I mean, this was basically £25 off of, off of retail. So, you know, like I'm saying, I want to correct that, um, that command um, service module, the actual command module and the um, protection over the front of it. Um, and that unit is only $25 from realspacemodels.com. And it's all resin and everything. And it's, and it's accurate for all the manned Apollo missions. If you're going to build an unmanned Apollo mission, I think this one is fine. I'm not sure even if even if the unmanned one still had the BPC, I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, and I've also spent nearly a hundred pounds, if you like, on the um, probably, it's probably over a hundred pounds on the um, on the update set for it. But at the end of the day, I'm going to have a really really nice 19, 19, 1996 96 scale Saturn V rocket, and I think 
if it comes out nice, if it starts to build up lovely, I think I'm going to wall out and get the um, LUT for it. Um, I want to do one launch tower. I don't want to do two because it's a cardboard model and it looks like it's going to be a lot of work to put together. So the 144 scale, it's lovely, but I'm not going to go to town on that. I'm not going to spend any money on aftermarket. As you'll see in my build, I'm just getting it better using some plastic card and stuff. But um, no, my intention with this is to, is to go to town on it. So that's why I'm getting all the extras. Um, one other thing I wanted to say is if you're getting this kit from your local hobby shop, um, it would be worth opening it and have a look inside the box before you take it home. It's not very well packaged. It's a very, very sturdy box. But the trouble is inside there you've got those sprues all just rattling around in their bags. Um, the the grey sprues are held in, in one sort of cardboard box at the bottom, so they'll, they'll be okay. But the big white sprues are just rattling around in sort of, you know, from, from, from here upwards. They're just rattling around in that area of the box. And you've also got in there, you've got the instructions, you've got your decals, you've got those, um, those sheets of uh, polystyrene or sheets of styrene, should I say, with all the printing on them. So if all those have caught up end on end with those bits of cardboard and it's been turned upside down, you know, you might find that all the corners are curled up or bent or even snapped. So um, I would check it before you go home if, you, if you're in a local hobby shop. And if you are buying it online, make sure you get it from somebody who's going to take it back with no problems. Um, you don't want the hassle of having arguments. And the other thing is, if you are going to use the box as its storage, the actual ends of the box where you open it, um, they actually come down and they kind of go around the actual rocket itself and hold it in place. So you could almost sort of, it's designed, the box is designed so you can put the finished model back in the box put the cover down and almost it'll be held in there in equilibrium. It won't get hot, moved around at all. The problem with that is I've just had a look when I've put the lid back down. If somebody was in a rush to close the lid, they could easily destroy that feature because it's all quite intricately cut to go around the bits that are inside. So check that out as well if you want to use the box. Um, but other than that, no, I think it's a great kit. Go and get one and, um, and build along with me. So I'll see you later, guys. Bye bye.